Hi, this is Christy Nielsen. I'm giving a short overview of the revised policy on standing orders, protocols, and order sets. I put this slide at the beginning because it's important you know where information from policies comes from. And standing orders, protocols, and order sets rule our lives. So I wanted you to know that like any policy, and in particular this one, the information from this policy is not made up. It's no one's opinion. It comes from the rules and the regs. So please take the time to look at the reference list and look at the information for yourself too to confirm the, any, kind of, any questions you may have. The Joint Commission and the CMS do allow the use of standing orders, protocols, and order sets because they reduce the delays in patient care, especially in an emergency situation. We don't have to take the time to call the providers for orders and to do something while a patient is having a life-threatening event. However, and there's not clear cut cut distinctions and definitions and the CMS and Joint Commission don't help out very well with that. However, the Joint Commission does have a definite definition of standing orders that we are using per exactly what they say. They have definitions of protocols and order sets that they suggest. And usually when a regulatory body suggests something, that's what they want you to use. So that those are the definitions we are using. Of all the information, this is the most important information right here. Regardless of whether it's a standing order, protocol, or order set, they must be approved by medical, nursing, and pharmacy leadership. Must be consistent with nationally recognized and evidence-based guidelines. That is going to be something we will hear the rest of our lives and something that we just need to accept, which is also the right thing to do for our patients. They must be reviewed and evaluated on a routine basis to make sure they are still pertinent and up to date. Now, standing orders must be reviewed and approved every year. That is a Joint Commission regulation. Protocols and order sets have a little more leniency by the Joint Commission and CMS, but they say they have to be re reviewed and approved on a routine basis and the hospital has decided that's a minimum of every three years. But this is a rule and reg. They have to be changed when there's a change in evidence-based practice. And that means we have to be keeping up on our review and research of evidence-based practices. They must be signed, dated, and timed within 24 hours by the provider caring for that patient at the time. And they have to be consistent with medical staff bylaws, rules, and regs. So medical staff bylaws, rules, and regs have to be keeping up as well. This is key. On this table are definitions and examples of standing orders, protocols, and order sets. The standing order definition is that given by the Joint Commission. Protocols and order sets are those that are suggested by the CMS. So standing orders are pre-written orders for medication or other types of interventions that we can do in given situations with specific populations of patients without having to contact the provider before going ahead and doing those. And then I provided some examples here. Protocols are step-by-step -step interventions that can include meds that we can carry out based on a patient's signs, symptoms, lab values, or something else without having to contact the provider before implementing. So like an if-then situation, if the patient has this lab value, then you can do this. If the patient has this symptom, you can do this. If the patient meets this criteria, then you can do this. So here are some more examples. Both standing orders and protocols have to be approved and have to be based on evidence. And then there's order sets. An order set is really just a checklist. It's like a menu of things a provider can order, and it's just kind of a reminder tool. But again, just like standing orders and protocols, it's based on evidence, so it can't just be a hodgepodge or whatever. So it has to be 
selections of orders that make sense that are based on evidence for that particular diagnosis. And they also have to be reviewed and approved by those particular leadership bodies. Radiology protocols were specifically defined in the Joint Commission and CMS rules and regs. So that's why I put it in the policy and that's why it's here. But radiology protocols have to follow the same review and approval process, the insurance that they follow national guidelines, that they are reviewed and approved every three years, uh, follow existing evidence-based practice, etc. But they were specifically outlined in the Joint Commission rules and regs. There have been questions on clinical practice guidelines, and that's why they're in, that's in the policy. Clinical practice guidelines are decision statements developed through a rigorous review of the research. They are not created lightly by a group of experts and then also a consensus of these group of experts. And they assist providers and practitioners in making decisions that are based on accurate, timely, and up-to-date care or information. And so that's evidence-based. Essentially, they offer direction to make sure that care is standardized throughout the country so that People in Basin, Wyoming are getting the same care that someone at Mayo is getting for the same type of situation, in the same type of situation. Basically says that we can't be doing whatever we want. We can't be making stuff up. We have to be doing, providing our patients the same type and level of care as the best hospitals in the country so that we can be one of the best hospitals in the country. And, and even beyond that, it's about making sure your patients are getting the care they deserve, no matter where they are in the country. So we can't be doing whatever we want. We have to be doing the best standard of care, the highest standard of care for our patients. I also included, well, because they deserve it. I also included links to some of the organizations sites where they have a majority of clinical practice guidelines. And it's important to know that by 2020, 90% of clinical decisions will need to be supported by evidence. And I gave you the link to the site here so you can look at that for yourself if you, if you desire. We included nurse-driven protocols because we are actually doing a nurse-driven protocol here, which is the NICOM protocol. So it's a protocol in which the nurse can initiate specific interventions according to a prescribed plan. So it's like the other protocols. If then, if this happens, then we can do this on our own without having to call the provider all the time. It has to be agreed upon by the nursing staff and medical staff. Everyone has to be on the same page. The protocols must be evidence-based and sources cited, and all policies should have references. There should be few, if any, policies that don't have a reference list. What we do has to follow within our scope of practice and then they are again reviewed and approved by medical and nursing staff leadership a minimum of every three years and then again as evidence changes. The approval process for standing orders, protocols, order sets, actually any policy, it's rather complex but it's intended that way oh, and it takes a long time. And it's also intended that way. And that's so it goes through various sets of hands and perspectives so that everything is as fair and as accurate as possible. So basically, the initial draft starts at whomever creates it. And you can create one, too. Anybody can create a policy or standing order if you want to. Um, and we actually desire that. We actually want people to do that. So you create a standing, you create something, and you take it to the people you work with and see what their response is, if they have any thoughts and additions or deletions, etc. If people like it there and think it's good and it's based on accurate and reliable sources, then you take it to your director. And if the director likes it, that director takes it to the next committee. So in nursing, it'd be nursing standards. Um, and you and the other departments, it would be whatever that same type of committee is. Then if it has medications on it, no matter where it comes from, 
If it has medications on it, it has to go through the Pharmacy and Therapeutics Committee, otherwise called P&T. From there, it goes to the Medical Executive Committee. Once it has been approved by the Medical Executive Committee, it goes through the appropriate approval pathway that's set up in the policy stat software system. And the reason it has to go through Medical Executive Committee is because physicians own clinical practice. So they have to approve all of that, what we're doing. They have to know what we're doing. So, because they have the ultimate responsibility. So it's important for them to know what we are doing at the other levels of patient care and that they bless us. And if you want to create a new standing order, or um, please use the form that's been attached to the standing orders protocols and orders as policy and policy stat. But you also can write a policy. It just has to go through this approval process. Thank you for taking the time to look at this or listen to it. Here are the references. Please take the time to review these. And if you have any questions, contact me or one of your directors. Thank you.